Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Into the Beat. Into the Beat is a German teen romance movie that's oriented toward the topic of dancing and focuses on the central character Katya, a ballet dancer at a prestigious academy who accidentally discovers a street dance club called Battleland. The style of the dancers at this Battleland club is very different than what she's used to seeing at her ballet academy and it very much piques your curiosity, especially whenever she encounters a boy named Marlon and the two end up becoming dance partners and inevitably, as you'd expect in this kind of movie, they fall in love with each other. This movie certainly doesn't get any points for being original. If you've seen Step Up or any of its sequels that have come out in the past, then you've seen pretty much any other dance slash romance movie out there that's like it, and Into the Beat is no exception. However, I will give credit where credit is due. The romance in this movie does feel a lot more mature in its presentation compared to that of Step Up and any other sort of teen dance flicks you can think of. I'll start by talking about Katya first. Now Katya, I thought, was a decent enough character. She has a lot of backstory behind behind her with regards to her family history and where they all ended up in their lives, and she just had a really fleshed out background right from the outset. I also thought her actress did a fantastic job in the role. Whenever she's happy and elated, you can't help but smile and be excited along with her. And whenever she's sad and depressed about certain things that happen in the movie, I felt absolutely heartbroken along with her. I think the sadder scenes in this movie were some of the most effective, just because we get to see a lot more emotional range come out of Katya in those particular scenes. Marlon, on the other hand, wasn't all that interesting. He is straight up a complete dick to Katya in the beginning of the movie. He just brushes her off and doesn't take her seriously at all, despite the fact that she is genuinely interested in his dance technique. I didn't even know his name was supposed to be Marlon to begin with. I don't know, maybe I just missed something at the beginning of the movie, but about halfway through, Katja's flipping through her phone and she's texting Marlon, and it wasn't until I saw his name in the top left corner of the phone, I was like, oh, okay, that's his name. And then I was like, wait. When did we learn his name was Marlon? There's another scene where Katya practices her technique in front of Marlon after having studied a group online. I think they're called the Disco Tigers. And all Marlon's response is whenever Katya finishes is, you're biting, which is basically the dancing term for having stolen someone else's technique. And whenever he explained himself in this regard, I was like, yeah, no duh, she's gotta start somewhere, man. And while I did find their romance to be more mature compared to other teen-oriented movies that have come out in the past, I still found its overall presentation to be very amateurish. The romance happens completely out of nowhere. Katya and Marlon are running around all over the city, and then they go on a boat, and then all of a sudden they're surrounded by security guys trying to get them off the boat, understandably so, because they're not supposed to be there. And then they start some weird dance number in front of the guys, and they end up oddly entranced by that number, and then when everything is all said and done, Katya just immediately locks lips with Marlon, and when that happened, I was like, what? There was no build up to that moment whatsoever. Prior to that, they were just laughing and having a good time doing their dance rehearsals. And then all of a sudden that happens. The romance didn't really improve from there. A lot of it was just laying down on beds and couches and having deep conversations that no adult honestly cares to hear about. And I know I'm being a bit mean when I say that, by the way. I know I'm not this movie's target demographic, but it just goes down the romance formula like it's a checklist. It goes through the honeymoon phase, the breakup phase, the get back together phase, it doesn't do anything different that you haven't seen before. The main reason to see a movie like this to begin with is to be entertained by the dance sequences. And personally, I feel that this is where the movie really excels at. The dancing scenes are loaded with energy. The soundtrack is loud and upbeat. Everyone that's dancing on screen is happy and having a great time. And it showcases multiple styles of dancing, all of which are beautifully choreographed. But to tell you the truth, as entertaining as those dancing scenes are, there's not that many of them in the movie. There's only about six or maybe seven. And then the rest of the movie explores the romance between between Katya and Marlon, which definitely isn't as exciting by comparison. I found the movie to be very moody and low energy. Outside of the dancing scenes where everyone's all animated and positive, most other scenes just sounded a lot more quiet, felt more somber, and had an overall more melancholic feel to them. Katya's dad definitely brought the mood down in a lot of scenes in this movie. He kind of serves as the main antagonist in that he doesn't want Katya to join the Battleland Club and wants her to stay at her ballet academy instead. Again, it's not really anything you haven't seen before. It's just your typical dad who can't stand the idea that his teenage daughter is about to grow up and have a mind of her own. There are little bits of humor injected here and there that do help offset the depressing vibe a little bit. Most of that comes in the form of these two guys who are friends with 
with Marlin in the movie. I have no idea what their names were. I don't remember if they were mentioned, but they were hilarious. They were just coming up with all kinds of crazy quotes anytime they were on screen, doing secret handshakes to each other, hugging everybody within arm's reach. I love them. They brought nothing but good vibes to this movie. Overall, Into the Beat is an okay movie, but that's the problem. It's so okay that it's not even really worth talking about. I do think that the dance scenes are a lot of fun, and like I said earlier, Katya's character is great. I love seeing the struggle that she goes through in the movie as she has to choose between her love of ballet and her newfound love with hip hop. But Marilyn as a romantic lead just doesn't do it for me, and the overall negative vibe and mood of the movie made it even worse. If you're looking for a casual teen romance flick, you might get some enjoyment out of this movie, although I personally feel that it's more oriented towards hardcore dance enthusiasts, so if you're into that kind of culture, this movie will definitely scratch that itch for you. This movie definitely isn't bad, but it's definitely not good either, and honestly, I won't be surprised if I forget about it a week from now. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Into the Beat. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review David Attenborough's latest nature documentary, Life in Color. Bye bye!